Here are the ring officials assigned by the New York State Athletic Commission. The judges, Jack Gordon and Tony Rossi. The timekeeper, Fred Abatello. Counting for the knockdowns, Johnny Colan. Referee for the main event, Arthur Mercanti. Ten rounds. Introducing from Hayward, California. He's wearing red trunks. He weighs 218. George Foreman. His opponent from Toronto, Canada. He's wearing blue trunks. He weighs 214 and a half. Recognized as the heavyweight king of Canada, George Chavalo. Main event, 10 rounds. Good evening, George and George. You both know the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. However, let's briefly review some of the more important rules. In the event of a knockdown, you must take an eight count. Three knockdowns and one round will automatically end the contest. When I say break, you must break. Now, let's have a nice clean fight. Shake hands now. Come out, boxer. Here's round one of this 10-round heavyweight bout. George Foreman on the left in the red trunks, if you're watching in color. George Chivalo in the blue trunks with the red border. Arthur McCanty, the referee. They're wearing eight ounce gloves. The count will continue at the bell. If a man is floored, he must take a mandatory eight count. And if a man is floored and three times in a round, he is considered knocked out. Now it's going to be very hard for Chivalo to stay away from that hard left jab and it is a hard left jab that Foreman has. It just got in there. And again. Chivalo's best is his left hook. And he got that in twice to the body. And McCanty is telling the boys not to get too rough. Imagine that. Both are very strong. It isn't often you see Chivalo using a left jab. Maybe they taught him something. Chivalo figures to go to the body to slow down the younger opponent. 11 years younger at 21. Foreman to make use of that left jab. A minute to go in round one. Foreman is keeping Chivalo off balance. Chivalo can't get set here. A uh, good right hand by Chivalo. And those are pretty good bombs. Ten seconds to go in round one. (laughs) 
back in the corner of George Foreman. We see his manager and trainer who has brought him along so well and so capably. Dick Sadler, he's on the right-hand side. And his cousin Sandy Sadler, the former featherweight champion of the world, is on the left-hand side. And Bobby Lewis, the uh, coach of the New York Jolts of the International Boxing League, they won that title. Uh, Bobby Lewis is in the center. And Dick Sadler is scrubbing off the face of George Foreman, who had a very good first round. There isn't any question about who won that first round. Uh, the only hope on the Chevalo's part could be that Foreman will punch himself out. Now, there's the corner of George Chevalo. We'll tell you who's in that corner a little later. Round two in Madison Square Garden. The first round was a big one for Foreman. Chevalier must hope that he'll punch himself out. Foreman making good use of his reach advantage. He's giving Chevalier no rest. Chevalier apparently having trouble with his breathing. Two minutes left in this round. Chevalo's best punch is his left hook to the body, and the question is, can he get it in there often enough? A good one to the head by Chevalo. Chevalo a little bit puffy around the left eye. There you can see the puffiness around Chevalo's eyes. A minute to go in this round. Time has to be on Chevalo's side. The first two rounds aren't. That is an angry mouse under the left eye of Chevalo. Ten seconds to go in round two. In the corner with George Chevalo on the left-hand side with the George Chevalo on the shirt is Irving Ungerman, a good Toronto businessman, his manager. Facing him head-on is Ted McWhorter is trainer, and on the outside, the veteran handler, Freddie Brown. Now, George Chevalo has had rough going in these first two rounds, and it will be a surprise to me if that left eye doesn't close completely because it is nearing the closing point right now. If Chevalo is going to pull this fight out, and I use the word pull out advisedly, he's got to do something drastic and do it fast because that left jab of George Foreman's is as good a jab as we've seen since the days of Joe Lewis. Round three at Madison Square Garden. 
George Foreman in the red trunks, George Chevallo in the blue trunks. Foreman's the taller of the two by about three inches. Foreman, for all of his inexperience, he's only had 21 fights, all of which he's won, is going about this job in a methodical, workmanlike way. And he's taking his time, unhurried, just piling up the points. Chevallo staggered. Chevallo has never been off his feet. Two minutes left in the round. It's an awesome battering that Chevallo is taking. He is now spitting blood. Chevallo being battered in his own corner. And Irving Ungerman, his manager, is asking the referee to stop it. He's climbing into the ring. The referee hasn't heard him. It's all over. It's all over. Arthur McCanty has stopped the fight. Irving Ungerman, to give him credit, his manager was climbing in there. There's the winner, George Foreman. Irving Ungerman wanted the fight stopped. It was no contest almost from the beginning. Chevallo is protesting to the referee, but I believe the referee did the right thing for boxing and for Chevallo. No question about it. We'll have an interview with the winner and probably have these rounds replayed. Here's Johnny. That's about the time. One minute, 41 seconds of the third round. The winner by a TKO, George Foreman. And we're going to get the winner and perhaps the loser of this fight over to our cameras. I'm asking Dick Sadler to come over here. Some picture taking here. That's Bobby Lewis on the left, George Foreman, Dick Sadler, and Sandy Sadler. Come on, let's get him over here, John. Come on, let's come over here, fellas. Here's the loser, George Chevallo, and the winner, George Foreman. George, would you mind turning to our cameras? You never really got started, did you? Not really, sir. No, I don't think the fight should have stopped either. I got hit with a few shots, but I wasn't hurt. Well, you know, but, I, I think I the manager know. was climbing in there. Irving, weren't you going to ask him to stop the fight? Yeah. You were halfway oh, up yeah, there. Here's Irving Ungerman, and... Uh, George, maybe no, it looked hard. different from where you were. Well, I wasn't hurt. I mean, I, I was still coming on. It took me a while. I thought it was taking me a while to get warmed up, but uh, there's no reason for them to stop the fight. George, yeah, good luck to you. We'll be we'll talking right, to you later on, Irving. Right. Here's George Foreman and Dick Sadler, his yeah. manager, and Dick and George, Bobby Lewis, Sandy Sadler, <laughs> former featherweight champion. George, you must be very happy. This is the biggest. Well, that was a good win. I, fought, I was fighting a good fighter. And I got a chance to work some of the things I've been practicing. And uh, I got lucky, like always. Oh, come on, and... you weren't lucky. You yeah, sound like yeah. Joe Lewis when you say I got lucky. That's called Joe Lewis no the champ. <laughs> uh, was the, did the fight go the way you figured it would go, George? Oh, yeah, I don't want to kill nobody, but you know. Listen, do you want to take a look down at our monitor here? And we'll have a replay of it, Dick and uh, George. And maybe you'll tell us something about the fight. Well, Can you see it down there? All right, I think. This the fight's not on you. Yeah. Now, here it is. This is round three. Round three, well, George. I, George is using his jab, which has been, has been his effective oh. weapon. The guy was missing a lot. and no power behind his punches of Chevallo. And consequently, the, he looked high. He was quite off balance. No power there. He's winging them desperation punches. And 
the, the fact is that George was in complete control of the fight with his left hand and getting off combinations. And, and then when the boy got hurt, there's no sense for what little money they're getting. I don't care if we win, lose or draw. I don't want to see nobody get of hurt in the ring. Not. But Dick, I got a good question. You know, all the, all the managers, well, we'll wait till the round is over here. George, suppose you tell us about the round. It's near well, the end now. George Bell is putting on a good fight, and I'm going to have to move him and wait, you know, get myself in control. Now uh, a good combination. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Coming in and good body punches and good head punches. And yes, yes. The referee is great. I got good on him, got a chance to get some punches. He's defenseless now. And I could do that all week, I think. And, uh, he's a game guy. He should be number one. And I should be number two, I feel. Oh, not now. Oh, look at that punches he's taking, man. Good job. It looks I'm, like a long round, doesn't it, George? Oh, yeah. My manager and me working on a lot of things. And that's part of it. Hooks. Good hooks. Now, this is where the referee is about to come in and stop it. You notice I'm in control. And... Did you think oh, it should be stopped, If he George? had any defense, he has nothing off it. He was bleeding out of his mouth. He was bleeding out of his mouth, which is... He's bleeding bad in his mouth, and he's bleeding bad from the nose, and he offered no defense. So what We're going to see it in uh, slow motion in a moment. Dick, yeah. i got to ask you a question. You know, hey, the manager... I say to a, a great guy who's trained a lot of great amateurs, Doc Broders in Las Vegas, California. He was responsible for taking me to the Olympics, and he's a great trainer, still in the process of developing young fighters. Happy uh, golf? No, 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 Doc Broders. Doc Broders. And I'd like to thank all the people who write all, right, all the good letters. Let's watch this in slow motion first. Okay. Sandy Seller yeah. is telling me, oh. I'm praying. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I have uh, Bobby Lewis and Sandy hey, Dick, in my class. Dick, I got to ask you a question. You know, managers always use the editorial we. You know, we're going to win this or we're going to stop him. And you just said that uh, George Savalo couldn't punch. How would you know? You didn't get hit. Uh, no, he, uh, uh, he didn't throw any punches and he wasn't offensive. He didn't put up any offense. Well, That's what I mean. You. I know it, uh, Don, but when we say it's a plural because it's, we, I'm, every punch he takes, I'm with him. So. Joey, one more question. You'll probably fight Jerry Quarry. What about well, that? right now I'm just in training. My manager's still teaching me. And I'm trying to learn to be one of the better fighters. Good luck. And I'm you. not particular nobody. Good Thanks luck. Lot, go, go. Sandy, Sandy. Sandy, come on over here, Sandy. Here's uh, Sandy Sadler, the former featherweight champion of the world. And I don't know whether they introduced you earlier. It might have been well, a moment. Uh, they maybe didn't recognize you with the glasses. Well, no, they didn't because I'm working in the corner. I didn't look presentable enough oh, you to, look great to, me. to uh, get ready to get How's your to friend interview. Willie Pep? Well, Willie Pep is in wonderful shape. I seen him here this evening. Good luck, evening. Sandy. Thank you very much. We'll be returning to Madison Square Garden and more of tonight's action in just a minute.